Hi, Rob here at the. Hi, Rob here at the rack shop. Uh, so today we are going to go over the Yakima Stage Two uh, hitch mounted uh, bike rack. So this is a pl uh, tray platform style rack. Uh, real Actually, I'm a. I'm gonna go ahead and stand up. So the camera is faced on the table for a better viewing of what's actually important here. So this will probably be the last time to see my face in this video. Probably for the best. <laughs> Anyways, uh, this is the Yakima Stage 2 uh, platform slash tray style uh, hitch rack. Tray style racks are great because they support the bikes by the wheels and then typically have a hook onto the front wheel. So it's one of the quickest and easiest ways to get bikes loaded and unloaded and it's one of the most versatile carrier types out there. So it can usually handle road bikes, mountain bikes, um, most of the time e-bikes, uh, special framed bikes, pretty much anything without front fenders. Uh, and even uh, with their fat bike kit, uh, if you add that to it, you can get uh, tires up to five inches in width. So a really great versatile uh, style of rack. And this one in particular is a really nice rack just all around. Um, so go over some basic details real quick. This box, if you are getting it shipped to you, the dimensions uh, about 21 by about 15 by about 40, just over 46 inches. Uh, we'll say that it is heavy when it's shipped to you. So it's 80 pounds fully boxed in the two inch model. However, all the packaging, when that's gone, the rack itself is gonna be 66 pounds. So even though that is uh, still a little bit heavy for most. The reason why it is so heavy is because it's it's built to handle potentially up to four bikes. What do you mean four bikes? I thought it was a two bike carrier. Well, it is a two bike carrier, but Yakima does sell an add-on converting this into a four bike unit. So this same rack with that purchase of that extra accessory, you can carry the whole family's set of bikes uh, really easily. But uh, because of that, they do need to make sure that this is built very, very strong and it definitely is. So really great rack all together uh, let's go ahead and get this guy out of the way thank you box you've done your job well all right so now we'll just kind of go over everything you get and then we'll go over uh, the assembly process and show you what needs to be done it's really not that bad so it looks like a lot of parts here um, really just thoroughly read through your instructions before you make the purchase see what's involved with the assembly and also to make sure that your bike's going to work with this rack but again most bikes will work with no problem so of course uh, you have your instructions, which you should read through thoroughly. Your safety notes, also read through those thoroughly. Uh, you also have your SKS uh, keys. So security is included for this rack. So the bike's locked to the rack and the rack locks to your vehicle. So all around, they even include an extra anchor point if you want to supplement with additional cables. So a really well thought out uh, bike rack. Uh, also you have uh, a bottle opener, you can't forget that keychain Yakima bottle opener. You got your premium tool here, the six millimeter hollow point Allen. So it's a hollow point for these tray bolts. These are tamper resistant bolts. So um, yeah, it may look like there's exposed bolts. So if your bikes are locked to it, you might be concerned. Well, somebody's gonna have to come along with a very specialized uh, set of tools to get that off. So that's very unlikely. It adds a really good layer of uh, theft deterrence to it. And some also some hardware for the pivoting arms onto the trays. So the trays, I have them currently set to where this is gonna be the outermost tray. That's identified by the Yakima logo. That's the inner tray. Then you got the spine, and then the two ratcheting arms, pivoting ratcheting arms on the end over there. So you do wanna look at your instructions. It does label everything out because while these, this, this looks similar, this and this looks similar, they are different. And you do wanna make sure that you end up with them oriented in the correct positioning. Um, and you can kind of cue off the image here and then also everything is labeled out of what it is and where it goes. So again, instructions can be overstated. Read those. All right, so yeah, from here, let's go ahead and get to uh, assembly. Uh, we'll go ahead and, and click the trays together here and then we'll reposition to the vehicle because uh, it does want you to assemble the hitch spine onto the hitch, which gives you a stable platform to work on and uh, honestly, it's going to be a lot easier to do that than on the table because everything is kind of unstable here on the table. So let's get to it. This part is the most difficult part of the whole thing. There you go. There 
There you go. Trays assembled. All right, so uh, just show you this real quick. You do have multiple holes because when you install the trays, it is possible to install um, to offset them. So if you want better clearance for one tray or another, uh, you can offset it and um, yeah, a better clearance. So trays are assembled. We'll go ahead and move everything to the receiver and continue on from there. Okay, installing the base or spine as they call it. It's pretty straightforward. Just go ahead and set that into the lip, slide that in a couple inches. And then what you'll need to do is make sure that the hitch uh, pin holds line up. And one thing you can do, obviously you can look at it, wait till that lines up when it gets close and then use the pin as a feeler so you can move the hitch back and forth until you make sure it seats, push that in and then you know it's it's where it needs to be. So that hitch pin is actually tethered to the rack to make sure it doesn't go walking off on its own. And once you have that in place, you wanna make sure that you tighten up the hitch base because it'll be pretty loose. To do that, you take this knob here, which is a really great knob. It's got its metal here with texture, so that has great grip. It's one of the better knobs on the market as far as for tools-free install. So you just spin that nice and tight, you can even wiggle the rack around to make sure it seats properly. What's, what you're doing here is you actually, when you're tensioning this knob, you're drawing in a, a little wedge. And that wedge is seating in the corner of the hitch. And as you tighten it more, it presses more against the inside of the hitch and creates the uh, anti-wobble. So now if we shake the rack, the entire car is moving. So it's a super solid connection. So um, yeah, that's, that's installing it onto the hitch and we'll continue on with the rest of the assembly um, and add the trays because we're almost done pretty quick. Okay, so now we got our spine installed. And again, you see it's a freaking super solid connection. Uh, now you can get a better sense of how the rack's gonna sit. So the trays should be pretty level once we get them installed, but you can see the spine goes at an upward angle. Um, obviously not, 45 degrees, I don't know, what is that, 25, 30 degrees? I don't know. I know it's like 80 degrees in here, freaking hot. <laughs> but, um, so that's a on-purpose design. It has two stages, stage two, and it's to help give better clearance. So especially on a lower vehicle like this, if you're gonna go up a steep driveway, um, maybe a large like speed bump, maybe a pretty freaking big speed bump, but, Anyways, it gives you much better clearance underneath the, the rack. So before platform racks protect the bikes from hitting the ground versus a hanging style, and, you know, the rack might be sacrificed, but in this case, um, it's gonna be very rare that you ever uh, hit anything. And much better if you're gonna take this, this guy off-road, which actually is approved for off-road. You do have a weight reduction in the bike weights, but it is approved. All right, let's continue with the installation. So per the manual, we'll start with the inner tray. So we'll go ahead and just get this set right here. Actually, I'm gonna grab my bolt because it is, uh, the weight is not centered. So it is gonna wanna fall to the left here. So we'll just set it down here, get a bolt started. That's gonna be one bolt and one washer. Okay, just get that started as far as you can by hand. I'm gonna grab three more and get everything started. And it is very important that you get everything started by hand. And actually what you wanna do is make sure, Ooh, tighten that first one pretty tight. Uh, get everything loose and started, and that's gonna help prevent any sort of potential cross threading that might occur if you're going in crooked. But the bolts are designed to where they enter and it's gonna be less likely to actually have any sort of cross threading. Um, so you might need to maybe wiggle the tray around in order to get that started. Okay, 
That one's good. This guy on this end. This one wanna start. There we go. Okay. Yeah, again, just this one just needed to be wiggled around a little bit. Alrighty. And this is where the video gets super exciting. And you get to watch me twist and twist. Alright. And just tighten these till they're nice and firm. And it does go faster if you get them as tight as you can by hand. And then just finish it off with the wrench. Okay. So that's tray number one. And actually we'll go ahead and get the rest of the pivoting arm on there as well. Just kidding, we're gonna put on the second tray. So like the first one, just come set the tray down, grab a bolt with the washer, get it started to kind of help hold it in place. Grab your other bolts and washers, get those guys going. Okay. Wiggle the tray around if you need to help get that seated. And sometimes if, if you need a little help, if it's hard to grab those rounded bolts, you can use the wrench to kind of help maneuver that bolt and get that, uh, get it aligned and help you get it started. There we go. Yeah, that one didn't want to start. It was a little hard to grab onto, so just use this wrench that's provided. Insert into the head of the bolt kind of wiggle around, kind of press in until it kind of seats itself. And then you can go ahead and start spinning it. But if you feel any resistance, make sure you double check what you're doing because if you're feeling resistance, you could be cross-threading cross it, which again, you don't want to do. Okay. All right, oop, this guy's not started. There we go. Okay, again, to the most thrilling part of this install. Just watching me bolt. Okay. But you can see we're pretty close to being done. Not a whole lot left. Just got to throw on the arms and then it's pretty much ready to go. So again, while some assembly required, nothing uh, evening, afternoon, a couple beers can't handle, beverages can't handle. All right. Okay. Trays are installed. Next thing we need to do is install the arms. So we'll go ahead and remove these little rubber rubber deals. Okay, and actually I'm gonna go ahead and get the camera. Let's see. Go ahead and tweak that a little bit. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. All right. So we'll grab our hardware from earlier. This cone, big washer, and this big bolt with thread lock installed. So that's gonna feed in just like that through the arm onto this position here. And you do wanna make sure you've got three notches here. That lines up with this, this uh, plastic sleeve here, three notches there. So we'll go ahead and slip this on. So I'm gonna swing this out, get that cone 
kind of a sleeve lined up. I'll slide that as far as I can. And then we'll take our handy wrench again. It's the same tool, so one tool for all this install, which is very, very nice. Get that started here at the bottom. And you do wanna make sure that you, on this cone, there is this flat edge here. You wanna make sure that lines up with the flat edge on the inside. So that's gonna be straight on the top here. Push that cone in. Now the bolt will reach and tighten that up. So as you tighten that up, that should start to draw the arm the rest of the way in. So you don't have to get a hammer or mallet out and start whacking it on. No need for that. So give that tight until this is all lined up back there. Switch it over, get a little more leverage and just nice and firm. Oh, a little too firm. There we go, tighten it back up. There we go. So now you've got great tension on this arm here. So this will swing back and forth. And then you've got your racket, ratcheting mechanism. There you go. Now I'll install the additional arm. Again, grab your hardware. Get this inserted. Let's see. Let's swing it to the outside. Get that aligned. Get the cone, make sure the cone is facing straight vertical. Push in. Get started with your hand. Grab your wrench. Tighten it up. There we go. All right, nice and tight. There we go. So effectively it's ready to go, but uh, that's not the end of this video. Let's go ahead and get a quick cut and we'll grab a bike and show you how to load her up. Okay, so we are gonna load a bike. Uh, we are gonna load it on the innermost uh, tray here. So to do that, we need the bike rack to accept a bike. So we'll swing this arm all the way up Push that all the way out to the side. The wheel holder here, we'll go ahead and get that loose and kind of just rock that back, get it out of our way. Now we grab our bike. Ooh, after we slam our bike. All right, and then we lift it up, drop it onto the rack. Always keep one hand on the bike. Now we're gonna bring this arm up and then we're gonna bring it close to the front fork and ratchet that down. So, and then you do want about one inch of clearance between the front of the bike and then your ratcheting arm. And then just go ahead and feel free to lean down on that. Make sure that's nice and firm. So you, I don't know if you can see on the, on the camera here, but there's a cutout for a thinner wheel. There's a couple of different cutouts. So it should fit whatever bike you're putting on here quite nicely. Over here, we're gonna go ahead and get the rear holder into place. And for that, we'll just slide the holder you can actually lift the bike up a little bit if you need some better clearance to move that. And we'll lift the bike so we can rearrange the spokes. So this strap will fit right in the middle. Pull that firm. And then bam, you're ready to go. So really that, that's all you need to um, really transport the bikes. But you do, like I mentioned earlier, you do have security. So within the arm here, you've got this cable. And it already has the SKS lock core included. So you just go ahead and pull that out, wrap that around the frame of the bike, and then back onto this housing here. And now the bike is locked down to the tray. So you can see here, the bike is kind of sticking out. It's actually past the mirror on this particular car. Um, but the same would be if on the second bike that you have loaded up. So great clearance between the two bikes. But if you do want to tighten that up a bit, 
like we mentioned before, when you saw the trays, you can actually rearrange the positioning of the trays and actually uh, center it up. So that'll give you a little bit, uh, a little tighter of a, of a rack, but the default position here, it's still not, not terrible. Um, but yeah, uh, a couple more features on this. The uh, operation for this bike would be the exact same, just the bike's facing the other way. Again, you do have a built-in anchor point here if you wanna add additional cables, maybe around the back wheel or another cable around the frame, just to add some more uh, deterrence to somebody. Uh, but on the end of the rack here, I'll make sure that's in the camera show. Oh yeah. You've got this um, lever here, so you can actually pull that and tilt the bike rack down. So now you'll have access to get into the back of the vehicle. Don't look in there, it's messy. <laughs> so that, that way you don't have to unload your bikes to get in or out. So that's a really nice feature there. To get it back into place, just lift up on it, on the rack. You don't even have to pull that lever again and it, it'll automatically, oh, there we go. Automatically find where it needs to go. So let me show you one more feature. Um, as far as, so it tilts down, it actually tilts up as well. Uh, but to do that, let me remove the bike. First, I'll take my key. Nope. Unlock that. So actually when I snapped it on, it wasn't locked. So make sure you take your key and lock that on. Make sure that's secure. So we'll take the key, unlock that, and then shove that back down into here, snap it into the holder and then do everything in reverse. So you actually do the rear wheel first, grab your bike, grab this lever, squeeze that, that'll release the hook. Swing that away, up and off. So like I mentioned earlier, this is one of the quickest and easiest ways to load and unload your bikes. And you can see it's super easy. We'll go ahead and fold this all up for travel. And with that same lever that we used to tilt it down, we'll go ahead and pull that out and then tilt it up. And that'll lock into place. And just clears the rear bumper on this vehicle. This bumper is, a, uh, the hitch is a little bit recessed. Whenever you have it uh, flush with the rear bumper, you have no problems whatsoever. And make sure you stow your bike before you walk away from it so it doesn't crash like mine just did. So there you have it. Um, almost there you have it. This knob before, uh, we didn't mention earlier when we installed it, but before you hit the road, you wanna take your same SK, SKS lock key, SKS key, lock this, and then now this free spins. So if somebody were to walk up, they would just sit here and spin that and not be able to actually loosen the rack from the vehicle. So again, this particular carrier is kind of the full package deal. Handles pretty much any bike on the market, has full security, uh, you can adjust the trays to help offset if there's different size bikes. Uh, handles small wheels from 20 inches all the way up to the big 29ers with a three and a quarter inch wheel uh, tire and long wheelbases too. So up to 52 inches in length there. Again, SKS locks are included. Uh, E-bikes, those are really popular. This can handle e-bikes up to 60 pounds each. Uh, and I mentioned before, it is actually off-road rated and RV rated but weight is reduced down to 36 pounds per bike. So uh, yeah, this was uh, again a not so quick look, but a pretty in-depth video on the Yakima Stage 2 bike rack. Um, please click the link in the description below. We have plenty of these in stock. Um, happy to ship it to you, free shipping. Uh, happy to go over it with you here in the shop and go over all the different racks and make sure we get the right rack for you. And, not just in the shop too. If you're not in Austin, feel free to give us a call, shoot us an email. Happy to find a great solution for you. Um, whether it's working on a certain budget or working with certain bikes and features, happy to work it all out. Uh, that's what we're here for. So please do reach out. And if you can like and subscribe, that really helps us grow and get more videos out there and uh, help get our brand out there and name out there. So please like and subscribe. And that's about it. So like always, Thanks for watching.